My name's Richard Franklin. I'm a Gunda Jamara fellow, which means family of man in my language. I've been working in Aboriginal affairs for a bloody long time, over 25 years. In that time, I've learned, um, in the words of Patrick Wolf, that invasion is a structure and not an event. Now, what's the evidence of that? The evidence is the incredibly high incarceration rates, the fact that we have a massive poverty of spirit, the fact that libraries were not a safe place because there were books written by the dominant culture about our people. So it was their interpretation of us. There were thousands of hours of film footage written, directed and produced by non-Aboriginal people. And this creates a lack of cultural safety for we Aboriginal people. Our symbols, images and sounds weren't visible. This affects us in a whole heap of ways. The Victorian Aboriginal Health Study on the mental health impact of racial discrimination shows that 97% of Victorian Aboriginal people suffered from at least eight acts of discrimination annually. It shows also that those that suffered the most, 12 or more, have a massive rate, massive rate of a psychological distress score. This relates to things like anxiety, depression, um, which of course leads to suicide. We have the highest suicide rate in the world. We have an incredible incarceration rate. We also have, uh, it's more likely for a young Aboriginal Australian to go to jail than it is to university. When I worked in prisons, which I did for a long time, taking art as a voice into the prisons, I noticed that when I introduced young men, young incarcerated men, in fact, men of all ages, to their culture, knowing their tribe, knowing their resistance fighters, knowing that we had a, an incredible social order for 2,000 generations, the light would change in their eyes and they would see hope. I would tell them, it doesn't matter if you don't know the name of your tribe. It doesn't matter if you can't name your son in language, if you can't say hello in language, if you don't know your dances, your ceremony, your ritual. What matters is you have the courage to stand up and you fight for that language. You fight for that tribal name. You fight to know about your resistance fighters. This is called cultural capacity building. We need cultural capacity building in every indigenous nation, in every indigenous tribe, in every indigenous clan, in every indigenous family. Because that's what we were for 2,000 generations. And a mere 10 generations cannot wipe that out. This completes us as a people. We need to know who we are. Michael Chandler's study shows quite clearly in his cultural continuity index that the less cultural continuity you have, the more suicides rate, rates you have. We need our culture. It brings us spiritual health, it brings us emotional health, it brings us mental health, and it brings us physical health. It's self-evident. Good on you, Low Witcher mob. Good on you.